Hello everyone, my name is Elizabeth Manns and I'd like to welcome you to the April 4th Coalition Show. This is the May 22nd, 2023 edition of the show and it's the 454th show that we have done since the closing of the North Adams Regional Hospital. The April 4th Coalition's mission statement is we are for workers' rights and collective bargaining rights and are against tax breaks for the rich and corporations who ship our jobs overseas. We support all the articles of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, but as is our custom, we put the emphasis on Article 23. Which ones would you like today? I'll Dave? take one and three, and you can do two and four. Okay. All right, number one, everyone has the right to work, to free choice of employment, to just and favorable conditions of work, and protection against unemployment. Number two, everyone, without any discrimination, has the right to equal pay for equal work. Number three, everyone who works has the right to just and favorable remuneration, ensuring for him or herself and his or her family an existence worthy of human dignity and supplemented, if necessary, by other means of social protection. Number four, everyone has the right to form and join trade unions for the protection of her or his interests. And as is our custom, we give a thank you and a shout out to Michael Putnam, who is the Community Radio di Program Director for WMNBLP 107.1. He usually airs the audio portion of our show on Fridays at 6 p.m. And of course, to the fabulous David Fabiano and his crew here at the Public Access TV station for helping us produce this show. And I say thank you to Dick for sparing me remuneration this time. <laughs> I thought I'd throw you off a little bit, but yeah. but today we're going to talk about child labor. Yep. It's in the news. Uh, just so happened that you know I looked, and Robert Reich's most recent uh, video? video is on child labor, and I had just received the uh, label letter, the union label and service trade union department from the AFL-CIO, their monthly, bi-monthly newsletter, and uh, had a section on. Uh, GOP lawmakers in several states introducing model legislation to roll back child labor laws. So I said, wow, I think we, we've come I think upon we can a, do topic. It a hot yeah. topic. And I then think we, it we is. have a few more videos that we're going to work in, some dealing with McDonald's workers and Popeye workers. Mm -hmm. And then we, there's a, a, a video that, uh, from uh, CNBC that talks about the immigrants uh, that were forced mm -hmm. to work. And we have some other videos, but maybe we'll save them for another day. But let, why don't we get started and lis listen to Robert Reich, and then we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. Corporations are bringing back child labor in America. And some Republicans want to make it easier for them to get away with it. Since 2015, child labor violations have risen nearly 300%. And those are just the violations government investigators have managed to uncover and document. The Department of Labor says it's currently investigating over 600 cases of illegal child labor in America. Major American companies like General Mills, Walmart, and Ford have all been implicated. Why on earth is this happening? The answer is frighteningly simple. Greed. Employers have been having difficulty finding the workers they need at the wages they're willing to pay, and rather than reduce their profits by paying adult workers more, employers are exploiting children. The sad fact of the matter is that many of the children who are being exploited are considered to be them rather than us because they're disproportionately poor and immigrant. So the moral shame of subjecting our children to inhumane working conditions when they ought to be in school is quietly avoided. And since some of these children or their parents are undocumented, they dare not speak out or risk detention and deportation. They need the money. This makes them easily exploitable. It's a perfect storm that's resulting in vulnerable children taking on some of the most brutal jobs in America. Folks, we've seen this before. Reformers fought to establish the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938 for a reason, to curb the grotesque child labor seen during America's first Gilded Age. The U.S. banned most child labor, but now pro-business trade groups and their Republican lackeys are trying to reverse nearly a century of progress. And they're using the so-called labor shortage as their excuse. Arkansas, 
will no longer require 14 and 15 year olds to get a work permit before taking a job, a process that verified their age and required permission from a parent or guardian. A bill in Ohio would let children work later on school nights. Minnesota Republicans are pushing to let 16 year olds work in construction. And in Iowa, 14 year olds may soon be allowed to take certain jobs in meat packing plants and operate dangerous machinery. It's all a coordinated campaign to erode national standards, making it even easier for companies to profit off children. Across America, we're witnessing a resurgence of cruel capitalism, in which business lobbyists and lawmakers justify their actions by arguing that they're not exploiting the weak and vulnerable, but rather providing jobs for those who need them and would otherwise go hungry or homeless. Conveniently, these same business lobbyists and lawmakers are often among the first to claim we can't afford stronger safety nets that would provide these children with safe housing and adequate nutrition. So what can stop this madness? First, fund the Department of Labor so it can crack down on child labor violations. When I was Secretary of Labor, the department was chronically underfunded and understaffed. It still is because lawmakers and their corporate backers want it that way. Second, increase fines on companies that break child labor laws. Current fines are too low and are treated as costs of doing business by hugely profitable companies that violate the law. Third, hold major corporations accountable for their supply chains. Many big corporations contract with smaller companies that employ children, which allows the big corporations to play dumb and often avoid liability. It's time to demand that large corporations take responsibility for their contractors. Fourth, reform immigration laws so undocumented children aren't exploited. And lastly, Organize, fight against state laws that are attempting to bring back child labor. Are corporate profits really more important than the safety of children? Actually, that is no. No. Obviously not. No. <laughs> They're not more important. And this is right out of the playbook for abortion. They're going to chip away, chip away, chip away until they get the result that they want. You know, when it was, oh, well, you can't, ha you can think about the abortion thing. No abortions um, after six months, no abortions after three months. Now it's three weeks, maybe, and you don't even know you're pregnant right. <laughs> most it's of the time. Just the reproductive rights of women. Right, it's, it's the same idea. They're, chi they're starting the chip away. And so the, the, uh, the, the, the workers' strategy. rights to protect children, mm -hmm. you know, is, is under, under attack. And it's, you know, these, the, the, uh, the interests, like Robert Reich said, these people that are interested in making it easier to employ children are the same forces that were against renewing the child care, care tax, tax credit order. that in four months cut childhood poverty by 46% yep. in a very short time. You know, it's just it just of not. unconscionable. The, you, gotta, know? you know, it, so you know they're they're sticking it to the poor. It's not the affluent that is going to go work in McDonald's. No, it's not the affluent. Now, it's the poor. You know, let's talk a little bit about our own work history. Sure. Uh, you know, I I can tell you that I worked for the Berkshire Eagle as a paper deliverer back in the 60s and 70s before. How old were you? I started age nine or ten. This this was a family route, and I inherited it as my brothers and sisters moved away from it. Being the last girl, I had it for like <laughs> a decade. But you know, and I didn't have regular wages, so I didn't have to do a work permit or anything like that at that time. But it was only two hours a day, Monday through it was Monday through Saturday at that point. I don't remember delivering a Sunday paper, but. I do remember doing that, and it was, you know, I made good, I made decent money, but it was all tips, and it was, I was a child. And then later on, when I got into being 16 years of age, I started working in a nursing home. Now there, it was a little touchier because I was dealing with hot dishes in an automatic dishwasher, and occasionally I had to work on, around the hot stove and things like that, and I had to deliver food up on elevators and carts in these racks that weren't exactly the best. But I was 16 at the time, so it wasn't that bad. And most of my shifts were four hours in the afternoon, evenings after school and so forth. But they did forget to keep track of how many days in a row I worked. So a couple times yeah. they violated that one, but it wasn't entirely intentional. It was just 
need at the time. They would just keep calling and my dad would say, sure, she'll come in, volunteer me before I was yeah. even ready. Well, my, my work history, uh, I worked, you know, starting at 14. I had to go to City Hall and get a work permit, but it was not during the school year. Right. It was only in the summertime. And it was through the government program, the Youth Corps program. So mm -hmm. I think it was 20 hours a week. And um, we were well supervised by employees of the city of North Adams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we did things like cut grass and fix baseball fields and, mm -hmm. and all those sorts of things. But uh, it, was, it was very much, you know, you had to go get that permit. You had to have your parents right. sign off that you were doing it. What's going on right now is, is, is not that. I mean, it, the Youth Corps program, I'm sure these same people that want to loosen mm -hmm. the, the regulations for children to work in the private sector, mm -hmm. you know, were totally against the these, youth, they, youth they, they, they would call them make work programs and they, they destroyed it. But coming from my perspective, it was very important teaching me how to work it was the fact that you know I, I earned money, and then I, I had money to maybe buy a bike, or to to actually buy yeah, clothes it, it taught, for school. It taught, you the, it taught yeah. you the values that you needed, yeah. a foundation to survive, to survive when you become an adult, because you had money, right? I banked it. I banked yeah. most of my money. I working for that newspaper. I probably saved four thousand dollars over that ten year span. And don't get me wrong, I wasn't. It was just that I didn't need to buy most of what yeah. the money could have bought for me. I was allergic to chocolate, so no candy was off yeah. the table. And you know, and occasionally I'd go out and buy a book or a record. I would just say, okay, mom, I'm ready to go buy this book or this right. record. But I just basically banked it all. Right, I, I just thought it was a great, great experience in getting out to the work environment. But I think the programs, run by mm -hmm. the government. Uh, you know, the Youth Corps program was probably an outgrowth of the, uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 what do they call it? The, 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 um, the, during the Depression, they had right, the, that was the, CCC. The, youth, the CCC, and they had the, and uh, the other one, Civil Conservation Corps. Group. You know, those types of things. They put people to work doing things for the public interest, right. not for private oh. profit. Correct. And Not so they, part. you know, these things were supervised and, and right, it, which tells you the government can do something right, right on occasion. Right. It's it's about it really profit. does a lot right. We it's just about don't profit, give it and the money just goes right back into the into the into the economy. Enemy. We don't send it to overseas bank accounts. But no. we have three other videos that we wanted to show. They're short ones, and one is for, for about you know um, McDonald's. McDonald's. Another one about Popeyes out on the West Coast, and mm -hmm. then there's another one from MSNBC that's uh, about uh, an immigrant that was uh, forced to work. So why don't we watch those three in succession, and then we'll have a little bit more okay. discussion on those. It's just wild. I can't believe that they actually had kids that young working something so dangerous. It'll be a few years before Kelsey Donovan's daughter joins the workforce. When that happens, Kelsey would hate for a future employer to take advantage of the situation. Yeah, of course you wanted to know how to work hard, but you also want to know, want her to know who to work hard for. Like many parents, Donovan was shocked to learn that three Kentucky-based McDonald's ownership teams face more than $212,000 in fines for violating child labor laws. The fact that 10-year-olds were working uh, was a bit surprising to me. Investigators with the U.S. Department of Labor say two 10-year-olds worked for free at a McDonald's in the Louisville area, sometimes until 2 in the morning. In all, three franchisees, including one based in Walton, are being penalized for allegedly letting mostly 14 and 15-year-olds work more than three hours on school days, which is the legal limit. It's a lot of work to go to school, work three hours, and do homework. Thanks, Ray Valdez. I'm on left today. Because of today's tight labor market, Chase College of Law professor Ken Katkin is not shocked that some businesses may try to squeeze extra work out of teenagers. Employers definitely have uh, um, incentives, business incentives to go over the line here, uh, but, but law enforcement um, you know, has incentives to hold the line here, and the, the, the laws are for the protection of, of children. Yeah, of course we empathize with companies trying to get labor right now. It's a difficult market right now, but definitely we don't want company is feeling that desperate so that they have to go out and get children. It's crazy. 
Now at 9, a rally outside in Oakland Popeyes by its employees accusing the restaurant of illegal working conditions. Location now shut down while facing a slew of investigations. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. I'm Vicki Liviakis. And I'm Grant Lotus. Many of the employees are speaking publicly and they're teenagers. Crown Force Teresa Stasio talked with two of them about what they call very clear violations of their rights. We would, our schedule would say that we were there from like five to 10 and then like last minute, they would ask us to stay till 11, but they wouldn't change it on the schedule. Jamara Romero. Or just the manager being, saying inappropriate stuff that makes me feel uncomfortable. And Carla Palma. Two teenagers speaking out about illegal working conditions they say went on at this Popeye's restaurant on International Boulevard in Oakland. Show harassment, the violence at work. The two took part in a rally on Thursday to bring light to their plight and others. They say one of their co-workers is just 13 years old. Child labor laws limit hours minors can work, including preventing them from being on the clock past 10 on school nights. Both say that they were ordered to do so often. Sometimes I wouldn't even go to school because I would be too tired. But then like later on that day, I had to go to work. I started, I started failing some classes. I started getting behind in some classes because I wouldn't show up or I would just be too tired to even go to school. Both young women say that they started working at the Popeyes this winter because they need to help their families and it was within walking distance. I be helping my parents pay some bills sometimes. Cron4 reached out to the California Labor Commissioner's Office as well as the Department of Industrial Relations who gave us a statement, quote, complaints to Cal OSHA are confidential. Cal OSHA and the Department of Industrial Relations take complaints of child labor very seriously. We can confirm Cal OSHA is investigating this work site. If safety and health violations are found, Cal OSHA can issue citations. Popeye sent us this statement that reads, quote, based on the allegations made this morning by team members at a restaurant owned by one of our franchises, we have immediately shut down his restaurant and have started a swift investigation. We will not tolerate any violation of employment laws. And if any of these allegations prove true, we will take action against this franchise. I feel like corporate has like the power to like close their stores and make sure that they're like following the rules. The two teens say they want to get back to work, but only if conditions change. Teresa Estacio, Antonio is one of tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of children who are in this exact situation, who have come across the border alone without their parents and been released to a person who, instead of taking care of them, has put them to work. Antonio did not sneak into this country unnoticed. He's not here undocumented in the shadows. He came through a shelter run by Health and Human Services and was released to somebody who said that he would be a sponsor. And instead of protecting Antonio, that man turned around and said, okay, you're 14, but now you have to pay rent. You also have to pay me thousands of dollars in debt. Go get a job. And so Antonio has been working full time since he came here a year and a half ago. Hannah, a day after your report went up, some Biden officials were grilled over migrant child labor. Here, here's a bit of that congressional hearing with the top official responsible for placing children in safe homes. Take a listen. Could the 85,000 number be right that the New York Times has? We don't know where 85,000 unaccompanied minors wound up. We uh, do not track or monitor. The answer is no. There are 85,000 kids who came across the border. We don't know. Is that right? Apparently it is. HHS is not getting a pass. HHS is here. I'm worried about who isn't on this panel and who has signed more than 100 minors, many of whom were migrant children, to work overnight shifts in hazardous conditions at meatpacking plants across eight states. Your agency or big corporations? Big corporations. Hannah, what does HHS need to do to fix this? And to the point you heard there from Representative Porter, who else needs to be held accountable? What we're really looking at is a system failure, and it's multiple right. systems. 
So these kids are being put to work and they're at the intersection of labor enforcement and immigration enforcement. And the Biden administration, to its credit, after our story came out a month and a half ago, immediately made some changes and said that it would go after corporations and really look at the employers that are hiring these children and putting them to work in jobs where a child should never be, you know, a meatpacking plant. And the other side of that equation is what is happening with health and human services, with the child welfare part of this equation. And right now, there's almost no support for the majority of these children. They're released to sponsors, and that's basically the last time the government checks in on them. And so there's a lot of pressure to ramp up services like legal services, social workers to send some adults out to check on these kids after they're released and living in most cases with people who are not their parents. Hannah, I've got a minute left, but I want to ask you this week, Iowa's mostly Republican Senate, they advanced a bill to actually loosen child labor laws. I mean, how do laws like that complicate then what we're talking about? I mean, it's shocking. You would think that in 2023, we would not have a child labor issue in this country. And what we're seeing is a real worker shortage. And the response has been in places like Iowa, Arkansas, their efforts underway in other places like Ohio to make it so that children can just do these jobs. You know, why not put a child in a meatpacking plant? Why not let a child work overnight? And it's really goes back to the same issue. Workers don't want to take these jobs and corporations are looking to children. So why don't we study why the workers don't want to take these jobs, why yeah. the adult workers don't want these jobs, and maybe you could find an incentive to get them right. to, t to take these issues, jobs. Safety issues, probably. Safety, in, wages, in, in, and yeah. undoubtedly. Right. And I think that they've been taking advantage of... of uh, mm -hmm. Oh, I don't expect a corporation to do it, I expect. They've been taking advantage of illegal immigrants yes. and putting them to work. work. And what happened in the immigration uh, system was that you know there was people were appalled when we had children in cages mm -hmm. and, and 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 so when the uh, biden administration came the number one priority is to get, get the out. children out and get sponsors and but now they found out that there were people that weren't Work. going there just to for the welfare okay. of the people they were going, going there, there to, to get, exploit. A, get a slave labor yeah essentially so, or so labor now we need more government agencies, legal, and whatever, we need more funding for that. Right. Meanwhile, we're, we're sitting in a situation where we have a Republican House of Representatives that wants to totally cut all, all discretionary funding, funding by about 45%, right. you know, so. So we're certainly not gonna fund any of those th things those to things protect, protect children. children. That, that's the part of government that, you know, that the people that say, oh, government government is always just a bunch of waste, but it's not. The, the, there the, are things that need to be funded. Right. The National Fair Labor Standards Act uh, is, is a tool to help workers be safe, mm -hmm. get paid, what hours and, they work. And, and it used to be understood that if the federal government passed a law or a rule or regulation, it applied across all 50 states. Yes. And now we see states here Irregardless, some of them didn't actually go through because there must have been enough protesting. But Arkansas and Missouri got theirs through, and I believe Iowa got theirs through, where they're saying, no, we don't need to tell you who, if we're hiring children for, to work in these, fact, in these unsafe conditions or they're not following the shifts. You don't need to know who got a work permit from us. We don't need to do this anymore because, you know, thereby making it even harder for child labor laws to be enforced. Because right. if you don't have the knowledge of who's working and how can you track and observe yeah, here's and one, investigate. Here's one section of it, not going into any states. It says the Packers Sanitation Services employed minors as young as 13. Mm -hmm. One of the country's largest food sanitation service providers, Packers Sanitation Services, was fined $1.5 million for illegally employing at least 102 children to clean 13 meatpacking plants on overnight shifts, the Labor Department announced in February. The company is said to have employed minors as young as 13 to use caustic chemicals to clean razor sharp saws, head splitters, and other dangerous equipment at meatpacking facilities in eight states. 
According to investigators, at least three children suffered injuries in recent months, including a chemical burn to the face while sanitizing kill floors and other areas on the slaughterhouses in the middle of the night. According to the Department of Labor, child labor violations increased 37% between 2021 and 2022, and the number of children found to be working in hazardous occupations such as meat packing and construction spiked 93% over the last seven years. U.S. Senator Brian Scatz, Democrat of Hawaii, introduced a bill to establish criminal penalties and increase maximum fines for child labor violation. The bill has no Republican co-sponsors and is unlikely to pass the Republican-controlled House. Oh, I think yeah. that's a safe assumption yes. there. And to be honest, it's, it does retract back to greed. This is a sector of the population that has no political wedge has no power because they don't vote. And by the time they get to an age where they can vote, they're gonna think, what's the point? I worked, those behind me might as well too or something right. along that line. So th this is a perfect storm where corporations, unless adults choose to become involved, can get away with it. You know, and they, they can pay less especially to the illegal immigrants. Right. They can I, pay less. I can remember just myself, I worked at Arbor Acres Chicken Farm. It was a multinational mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. breeder broiler of chickens. And uh, this is just anecdotal, but you know, I, I know when I went and applied there, they said, well, not many people who went to college applied to work for us. You know, a lot of the people that worked there couldn't read. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, we were here in, 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 in Berkshire County, mm -hmm. but they were telling stories of the other plants because this was a multinational corporation mm -hmm. that was all over the world. They were talking down in Connecticut and they were talking about most of the people that worked there were Hispanics. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I, I just sort of got a feeling that there was a, a racial aspect to, to, to the these hire. jobs, these mm -hmm. jobs weren't good jobs to have, and and they were taking advantage uh, of people that Needed. had had very difficult uh, uh, circumstances. circumstances, and didn't have many ways to communicate about violations. Right. And you know, working on that farm, we worked six days a week, no overtime, because we were farm workers. Right. There was no overtime, no time farm. and a half. You know, right, so, because farming is one of those industries that goes yes. from sunrise to sunset or yeah. whatever. But anyways, we're, we're down to the last uh, 30 seconds. Please uh, do some research, get some knowledge about this topic. I think it's a very important one. We'll continue to, to look at it and, and talk about it, uh, but it's important to, to, to understand the situation and communicate it to others that it's unacceptable for children in our society to have to work. Oh, absolutely. They shouldn't, sometimes I even think 16, they shouldn't be able to work until they're out of high school completely yeah. and have graduated. Well, power to the people. See you next week. Cheese.